Welcome everyone to this uh, this session with uh, Atmaram. He's also known as ATM, tells me, um, from way back. Um, he's been in the testing space for about 15 years. And today he's going to be um, talking to us about Appium Flutter Driver, a use case uh, demonstration for us. So looking forward to that. Hello everyone. So today I'm going to talk about Flutter APM Driver. Now, I believe uh, many of you might have done automation previously, right? Uh, any sort of automation, let's say Selenium, APM, or Flutter, or any other sort of automation. Some might have used Cypress or any other automation. And uh, what do you think? Automation is easy. You can quickly raise your hand if you think automation is easy. OK. Okay, so uh, many, many times we hear from the people who code like UI automation is easy. And in case of mobile applications, because it's just another mobile application, right? Mobile application in the sense, the application is made of screens uh, and the screens are made of elements or the screens are made of some sort of objects that you drive and you drive those objects through drivers or any other technologies that underneath framework provide. There are so many frameworks available right in the market and that makes your job of automation easy, right? But, but in case of mobile application, Application can run across many platforms, many platforms in the sense, when you talk about mobile application, many people might be using Android, other people might be using iOS. Now it depends on case to case basis, like what is your target users, but most of the times you might need to cater to both Android and iOS applications, right? And your application might be running on both Android as well as iOS. And what if I say this application is built with some third party components? Third party components in the sense, these components could be some sort of third party libraries, libraries that are made with some third party screens as well, or third party UI components as well. We often come across these cases, right? Like these applications. So if it is a simple application, it could be just created with some simple, simple libraries, but there could be libraries included into the application, which are having this third party screens. You might have, you can relate it with the React Native applications that if you might have used. In case of React Native applications, a React Native application could be in, embedded like a web view into the native applications, or there could be a web view embedded into other applications. How many of you know Flutter? Just raise the hand. Okay, so Flutter is similarly the programming paradigm or it's a framework where you can create application for cross platforms and Similarly, the similar case arise with the Flutter applications as well, that these applications are having Flutter screens as well as native screens. Now, how many of you still think like UI automation is easy after hearing these complexities about mobile applications? Okay, so the talk which I'm going to talk about is about one such use case, which is APM Flutter driver. So APM Flutter driver is a APM based driver created by community for such kind of use cases only, where application is made with third party libraries and application could be run across many platforms. And application has a native screens as well. Native screens in the sense application has 
flutter screen as well as application has native screen so before jumping into the talk i'll talk quickly about myself my name is atmaram naik i am working at kodo technologies right now uh, i have been maintaining an open source tool called as a core uh, this tool is used for test data generation as well as stubbing data or stubbing apis mocking apis uh, it's used for multiple purposes we have been using this tool i'm passionate about writing good code and here are my twitter handles atmnk9 my linkedin profile also has atmnk9 and i go on github by atmnk so i have been maintaining open source contributions with github at atmnk do tweet about uh, the talk uh, do tag me um, if you find this talk helpful so let's jump to the use case application use case so uh, for simplicity what i have done is uh, i have reduced this use case into the smaller application the uh, so let's talk about this use case first use case is like your application is made with flutter flutter technology and now this application has some native screens as well this native screens could be because of third party libraries or because of native application features or there could be native interactions with the applications so that is the use case and to cater this use case i have created a modified counter app so counter app uh, we mostly use for our demos and all of those purposes but i needed to modify this counter app just to cater the use case now how how this modification is a modified counter in this modified counter app unlike the uh, typical counter app where you click on add button plus button and counter increments here you need to purchase the counter purchase in the sense like when you click on plus button you need to pay 1 rupees to get that counter incremented now what does that mean it means it integrates with either native native payments or it either integrates with payment gateway so for this demonstration purpose i have integrated this counter app with razor pay payment gateway so we we will be using razor pay payment gateway now this application screen which is the counter screen which is made in flutter and this application because it is made in flutter it can run on ios as well as it can run on android so that's the that's the use case of the application um on the prima facie it sounds simpler right any other application or any other application right so let's have a quick application demo so what i am going to do is i am going to demo the application i have ios simulator now this is the purchase counter application that i am launching so it has launched the application initially you see counter is zero now when i click on plus button it launches razor pay payment gateway screens now first screen in this razor pay payment gateway ask me to enter my phone number i am i am just putting some dummy number and of course an email id just putting some dummy email id once i proceed i need to select payment mechanism how i am going to pay for this counter so there are two payment options right now pay using card or pay using net banking so for this use case we will be paying using card now it is asking me card details these are not my card details uh, these card details are generally provided by these are fake card details these are provided by payment gateways generally now once i click on pay there is a screen either i can make this transaction successful this is a test purpose screen that 
razor pay test sandbox or razor pay test environment provides like i can make this transaction successful or failure i'll make this transaction successful and i can see a payment successful message and the counter is incremented to 1 so this is the whole demo of the application so again looking at the application it looks simple like it 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 looks like any other mobile application uh, that's that's the beauty of the uh, beauty of mobile applications or flutter applications as well like you create cross platform applications and this plat uh, this uh, applications can run on both ios and android but let's see what it means by this application so now jumping back to the presentation this application demo we saw what do you think what would be the test scenario in this application what what we will be testing in this application we'll be checking if purchasing a counter increments a counter or not so that's what we are going to check here and what does it involve like what does it involve while we are doing this or what what will be the steps for doing this so the steps for doing this would be like click on plus button that we did when the counter value is zero enter your details like email phone number select payment method the one which we selected either uh, pay by card or pay by net banking then we entered the card detail and we decided whether to make transaction successful or failure and expected behavior out of the application is like counter value should be now one so that's that's the simple test case that we see out of this application as well like i have an application and this is a simple test case i need to automate for now when i am going to automate this particular test case it seems simple like looking it as a black box application it seems simple but to understand what complexity it brings let's see the internals of the applications so this applications counter screen the first screen that we saw where we saw zero as a counter value and one when it incremented and payment successful that screen is made in flutter actually so that screen can run across many platforms now when it came to other screen which were provided by razor pay payment gateway library so we have added a razor pay flutter sdk library for integrating this application with razor pay now what what as this library brings as a challenge to the uh, to the floor is like when people started developing in flutter the application the screens that were created natively in flutter were very well good for all of these automations but flutter was new into the market and there were already native libraries created for many platforms the same was the case with razor pay so what this third party library started doing is they have started wrapping their libraries into the flutter library so the flutter uses a a programming long language called as a dart and that in that dart language you need to write that library so they what they did is like they actually wrote a dart based connector for this native libraries and they bundled the native libraries into the package of package of flutter based library what does that mean is this library is nothing but using the native features only but it's just a bundled library and the screens obviously used on a razor play flow are now a native native screens and not the flutter screens so many of you might have used already used flutter driver which comes uh, if you have done flutter based automation you might have used flutter driver to do this automation for flutter screens only right so when you have only flutter screen you can use flutter driver very well to automate this flow but when there comes this native screens what you can do so that question bothered me uh, when i was doing my pet project and that time uh, i was integrating with such third party libraries which were having this native screen that question bothered me how do i test this thing how do i test non flutter things in flutter application so that's that's what the challenge we want to understand 
so home screen is made in flutter and the locators for this home screen are flutter specific locator so those who have used flutter automation might understand uh, there is something called as a accessing by value key or finding by value key or finding by text or all those mechanisms in flutter screens is slightly different and razor press screen since these are made in uh, made in native screens for android you use different driver for locating the element for ios you use different driver for locating the elements so locating the elements on native screen need to be done differently and locating the element on flutter screen need to be done differently so that's the challenge that we have right now over here and when we talked about flutter driver flutter driver has a really good abilities when app is purely made with flutter screens because flutter driver is dart based driver and what it does is flutter driver is suited for applications which are made in flutters only and hybrid apps are difficult so that's that's the problem with flutter driver like you you cannot use hybrid applications uh, for uh, automatic flutter driver and running tests simultaneously on device farms or multiple devices simultaneously is also not possible with flutter driver so that's that's the that's the problem with flutter driver uh, but underneath flutter driver uses a very good technology called as a dart uh, dart vm or uh, flutter vm that vm can control the application on on some uh, on some protocol so dart vm protocol it is called as so that protocol can control the application so that is very good part of this flutter driver now let's talk about apm flutter driver so apm flutter driver is apm based driver it is different from the flutter driver we just talked about apm flutter driver is apm based driver and underneath apm flutter driver also uses dart vm service protocol so it has all those abilities that flutter driver provides uh, some of them are yet to be developed but they, it it has most of the abilities that flutter driver provides and since it is coming from apm community it supports native screen that apm provide so it supports native screens as well so that's the power of apm flutter driver it supports dart based dart based applications dart based applications screens as well as native screens and supports many thing that apm supports there there is some question uh, uh, from puja shah to everyone let me have a quick look at this question having tried switching between natives web drivers while using testing offers i mean between page yeah so widgets uh, flutter uh, and we uh, we were talking about flutter screens right so flutter screens are made with widgets and these widgets can be located using value key and uh, those keys so that's about flutter apm flutter driver now to to gain more about how this apm flutter driver internally works let's have a look at a diagram so what apm flutter driver provides you is it provides you the context of the application so whatever flutter screen you have you can have a context which is called as a flutter context which you can see on the left side of this diagram which is there in blue so flutter screens you can you can automate in flutter context and native screens that you can see on the right hand side of the diagram those can be automated into the native context so apm flutter driver provides you the ability to switch those contexts so in this case here when we are on the counter screen we switch to the native screen when we click on plus uh, plus button and that's why we switch to the native context as well and when we are done with this entire journey of razor pay screens like when we do the success which is the bottom left uh, bottom left screen in the green zone when we click on success we switch back to the flutter context so that's the crux of the flutter apm driver in flutter in flutter apm driver 
you can you can switch the context from right side native screens to the left side flutter screens now how does that happen and how we can code for that that's what we are going to see in this codes demo so now i'll be jumping on to the demo of the code Many of you might have used, uh, mostly people use Java, right? For uh, automating things, Java or any JVM based languages, right? Um, maybe Java or Kotlin or some people use, uh, some people use, uh, uh, some people use uh, other languages as well, JVM based language like uh, Groovy, right? But here I have used TypeScript. Um, uh, since uh, this APM Flutter driver, um, is readily available in as a uh, as a Node.js package. So underneath we are using Node.js. So Node.js is similar to any other platform like JVM is a platform for writing Java based or bytecode based code. Node.js is a platform for writing Java, writing code which can be transpiled into the JavaScript. And TypeScript is a superset of uh, JavaScript which gives you type safety. So you can relate TypeScript may very well with the with the Java as well. So here we have used TypeScript. So in any Node.js project, you will find package.json file. So this package.json file. So the, the way you have uh, uh, the way you have uh, this uh, Maven POM file or gradle in case of gradle build dot gradle file you have package.json file where you define your dependencies so here we have added these dependencies wdio cli so we are using web driver io which is again driver uh, driver automation tool uh, which gives you sim uh, simpler interfaces for automating for drivers we are using apm 2.0 beta and we are using apm flutter driver so this is the library that we are using apm flutter driver and there is one more helper library created by the community which is apm flutter finder yeah so this apm flutter finder and apm flutter driver these are the crux of these libraries that we are using these are added as a dependencies and there are added other dev dependencies as well so dev dependencies are like runtime dependencies that you add in maven or you were a build or build gradles. So we have added web driver IO. Chai we are using for assertion. So in case of Java based projects, you might be using um, Hamcrest assertions or you might be using assert jets assertions, right? So here we are using Chai library for doing those assertions. Uh, web driver IO provides APM service as well. So we don't need to start APM server and do anything. We can use directly APM service. Web driver IO takes care of uh, starting the APM server. Uh, local runner we are using for locally running this particular test. We are using Mocha framework. Uh, Mocha framework, uh, so you might have used JUnit or TestNG as a test management framework in case of automation, right? So here we are using Mocha as a test management framework. Uh, these were the types for the chai. So in case of TypeScript, you generally need to uh, you need to add uh, types as well uh, so that they provide you the type definitions or the class definitions you can in simple words you can say class definition for this library chai so chai as as a javascript library it is not a type based but when you add types uh, with chai then it becomes a types uh, and use it with typescript then you can use uh, types or the classes or objects in the chai as well uh, TS node is used as a compiler for uh, this particular uh, TypeScript is used as a compiler. TS node is used for transpiling the applications. And we are using WebDriver IO, Mocha, or some reporter. So this reporter is used for reporting the applications. Now, this is about the package.json file. We also have TS config file. Uh, this ts config file is used for uh, defining from where the types are going to come so our types are going to come from node platform then mocha framework then web driver io async then chai and apm service that's why we have defined these types are going to come from so this ts config is like a configuration for typescript 
uh, going back to the package.json, we have defined two scripts over here, test Android and test iOS. So these two scripts are actually, if you see there is a run button over here. These two scripts are can be used for running the running the test, actual automation test. And underneath they are using npm wdio run command with two different configuration. For iOS, we have different configuration. For Android, we have different configuration. And we are going to talk about these configurations now. So this is, these are the commands. These are nothing but like we are creating command for running the test. Now, if you saw this, these two configurations were coming from config folder. So let's go into the config folder. So WDIO dot Android dot conf. This is the folder. Uh, this is the, uh, this is the file where we are going to keep Android related configuration. So Android related configuration, uh, the web driver IO configuration, this is a web driver IO configuration. So when we are running test using web driver IO, web driver IO is going to pick the configuration from here. And this is going to run on the port 4723. The specs or the test will be residing in test slash specs slash star star slash star dot ts. So this is the directory we are telling web driver IO that my test is going to be residing into this particular folder. And web driver IO provides this capability of adding capabilities to the APM driver. So it initializes driver for you. You don't need to initialize the driver. And when, when you, in typical APM scenario, when you initialize driver, what you need to do? You need to provide the capabilities, right? So that's why we have these two files. So because these capabilities are differing in case of iOS and Android, we have two files. So for Android, we have platform as an Android and we, uh, we will be using emulator. Our automation name, so this is the crux of this particular driver. Our automation name is going to be Flutter in case of both the both the capabilities. For iOS also, we are not going to see, say the automation name as Android or iOS. Rather, we are going to say automation name as Flutter. And similarly, we have iOS configuration. I won't go into the details of iOS configuration. Most of you might have already done iOS. The configuration is similar runner and all. Only thing over differs over here is capabilities. And we are telling from where to launch the folder and all. So these are related to the configurations. Now we saw our specs or our tests are residing into the specs folders. Now let's go into the specs folder. So these specs are in test specs folder. Now, what do you think? How, how should, how, how this test should look? We are interacting with elements and all right, but we are using uh, page object pattern. We, uh, we are using with screen objects. Like we have screens and we have objects, right? So we called it screen objects, but our test should not look as polluted as like that. It should just interact with pages. So that's why. Over here, what we are doing is we are just creating new home screen. On home screen, we are clicking add button. So we have a command on this uh, on this home screen page. We have add command. Once we have we are done with add, it will return a page which has add details as a feature. So the next page on next page we are doing add details. There we are providing random email, uh, random mobile, and random email. This will bring me a next page on that next page. I can do select card as a payment method. So where I selected the card, this will bring me a next page, which we, where I am going to put the credit card details. So I have created a method pay where I'm providing credit card details, expiry name and CVV. Once I am done with paying, I click on pay button. Uh, I see a test screen where I can either make that transaction successful or failure. So I can, uh, on the next screen, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it successful. Uh, so Nikhil uh, has a question. Can, can we use Cucumber or behave also with web driver? Yes. So the way I talked Mocha as a test runner, you have uh, a Cucumber test runner as well available with web driver. So that is very well possible. So 
but here i for the simplicity purpose i have only used page object pattern and i have not added a gherkin based or a bdd based scenario uh, once this payment is made successful yeah i am going to go into the details of the e screen um, we have uh, sufficient time we are going to see entire code first i am going to walk you through the how the test looks uh wait for payment successful i am going to wait for payment is successful then i am going to get the counter the value of the counter and i am going to assert the value so this expect is used from the chai i told you the assertion library so expect value to be equal to 1 so since you are very much interested to the the code the actual magic which is happening behind the screen you are wondering like how this entire entire one single script can cater to both ios android flutter screens native script how does just one single script can do that and that's the that's the beauty of this code that's what my passion is about like writing good code right so we are going into the screens now so so the way we saw that diagram we had two zones right native zone and flutter zone we have two zones in our code as well flutter zone and native zone in flutter zone we have flutter screen in native zone we have native screen so in native zone we have android ios and something common about those so i will keep flutter screen for the later part first what you have done typically with the android screen and ios screen let's see that uh, you you might have typically automated apm with android or ios so this automation is nothing but similar we have something as a base screen object so this is razor pay screen base base class and each screen or a uh, first screen that we talked about customer detail screens right first screen is extending the razor pay screen but what is this implements i customer screen so that's that's the beauty about the abstractions in any programming languages you can generalize your screen so we saw like both ios screen and android screen android screen have very similar behavior like like they 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 have both both the screens are same but implementation is slightly different right that's why we have used interfaces and that's nothing but in our common folder so for example in customer screen what we are doing is we are just defining the contract for the screen like this i customer screen is defining the contract this is called as a programming by contract where we are just defining contract for the screen like whichever screen implements add details can be called as a customer screen now in case of android this customer screen implements this customer screen or in case of android implements this i customer screen so if i don't implement this particular method it will give me an error you can see this it is giving me an error so i need to implement this contract i need to provide this method and because i am providing this method i can use that method in a, in my test so this add detail screen is made like that now implementation of this add detail function is local local in the sense local for the android so we have used local locators for android the way you use ui selector resource id ui selector resource id email ui selector resource id button overlay so that's that's the that's the local implementation or spec android specific implementation for this add detail so i won't go into the details of type after clicking these are just reusable method we have created so <clears throat> but crux of this screen is it is using local locators for example customer screen that mobile locator this local locator it is using local to this class and and this method will just execute for android similarly for ios if you go into the customer screen ios customer screen these locators are totally different these are ios locator you can see similar is the case with all four screen so whatever native screen we saw on flutter context in flut uh, sorry in uh, native context all those native four native screen card detail screen uh, for example card detail screen has 
element locators for card details, decision screen where we are making successful as locators for uh, native, uh, native screen. So these are native, native implementations. Now, what do you think then we should, we should create similar thing for Flutter screen as well? How many of you think like that? So for Flutter, since code, Flutter code is made with Flutter uh, Dart based code and locators on iOS and Android are going to be same. There is no different locator. And this Flutter, uh, APM Flutter driver that we are talking about is providing us that ability to locate by Flutter's native, uh, Flutter's native location uh, strategy. So find by value key, find by value key. This locator is going to work on iOS as well as Android. That's why we don't need separate screens for Android and iOS. So whatever screen you create in Flutter, you will just need only one particular class for each screen. And that's why we have home screen, which is just a one class, no two different, different implementation for native screen. And there our locators are find by value key. So this find is nothing but APM Flutter finder library which we are using. So find by value key we are using. Uh, value key is defined as add. So you can think of this value key as ID in case of, um, um, in case of, uh, in case of uh, let's say we are using um, um, uh, Selenium based browser or browser based automation there we use ID. In case of uh, Android application, we use accessibility ID. So value key is used for testing purpose only. You can add this value key into the application code so i have already added that and that's why i use find by value key <coughs> counter i am accessing find by value key counter now when we click on add button we are doing driver element screen element click add add button so that's what we are using so this driver element click home screen add button is provided by apm flutter driver now once we click on add button we want to switch to the native context right and that's why over here we are doing switch context native app. And now when we switch to the native context, if the platform is iOS, we want to get iOS screen. And if the platform is Android, we want to get Android screen. That's why we have the over here if condition. If platform is iOS, return custom customer screen iOS. So we have Im imported customer, uh, customer screen from iOS as a customer uh, screen iOS and as a for Android, we have imported customer screen Android. So this is how we are targeting the platforms. Like we are, we are using platform as a uh, environment variable. When the platform environment variable is iOS, we are, we are, we are loading the iOS screen. And when the platform environment variable is not iOS, we are loading the Android screen. And switching to the native context was the crux of it. And when we are on the success screen over here in any Android or Android or uh, iOS screen, may, uh, decide screen, where we are deciding, we want to switch back to the Flutter context, right? So uh, once we click on that make successful button, we want to switch back to the Flutter context. So here we are doing that. So switch context Flutter. So we are switching the context. So whenever we switch from native screens to Flutter screens, we switch context from native to Flutter. And when we are switching context from uh, Flutter to native, we are switching native to Flutter. So that's that's all about this code. Um, that's all about this demo. Now I'm going to run this test. This will run the test. Uh, since it is taking time, I will just show the recorded videos of the test I have.
So same code I have run. So it clicked on plus button, then it entered the values. And that's how it executed. Similarly, it can run for uh, Android as well uh, with the command uh, that I just showed. So that was about the demo. Now going back to the slides. APM Flutter driver has this many features like uh, finders and some, some commands that you can that you can access and that you can that you can understand on the APM Flutter driver page as well. There, it is a GitHub based repository. Now I'm going to talk the quick summary of the use case. So this use case was some screen were made in Flutter code and application can run on different platform. Application is integrated with third party Flutter library, which wraps native feature screens on the Flutter package, right? and test scenario need to cover all these screens. So that was the summary of this use case. And there you, you can encounter many such use case in other scenarios like there could be more payment gateway. So Stripe also uses similar thing like Stripe has arrived, uh, wrapped the library and uh, uh, native libraries for uh, this automation, uh, for, uh, for this uh, particular, uh, the particular Flutter uh, related library. There could be maps, there could be native feature, there could be Flutter embedded and native apps, there could be web views. So there could be many similar scenarios where you need to interact natively or you need to switch the context. There you can use switching context as, as the core concept for Flutter, Flutter. But you need to have some caution with this library. Um, this library is very early in the stage of experiment and breaking changes and breaking code are expected. And some of the mobile commands are not yet implemented for this library. And some of the APM commands are also not yet supported by this library, like long term. So you need to use it with caution. Only if you have a use case, you use this library. So that's what uh, I'm, I'm going to suggest. So on closing thought, uh, APM started uh, supporting APM Flutter driver since APM version 1.21. And because of which it has unlocked automation of many apps, uh, may, uh, automation of many apps like Flutter and APM Flutter driver was the first steps towards making APM support other drivers like APM Flutter driver is a community driven driver. It's, it's not a native to APM, it's a community driven driver. So since APM 1.21, APM started supporting APM Flutter driver. And now with APM 2.0, it's not just one driver that we are going to have in future. It's going to be whole set of new drivers that we will be having. And we are at the age of that fantastic change that you will be creating your own drivers. You will be having your own drivers and you can unlock many automations that were not possible previously. So that was all about it. I uh, hope you liked it. I hope you liked the demo. hope you liked the code. Uh, uh, if you have any questions, uh, I'm going to take those right now. Uh, do we have some time for questions? Yes, we do have some time for questions. So in your screen share, and we'll yeah. get, a, get a good look at you. We've still got, well, we've got one or two minutes of some questions if there's some questions there. We've got something in the Q&A. Can we yeah. use Flutter driver concept using Java and Python language? Yeah, so this APM Flutter driver, although it is implemented in um, um, in uh, Node, but you can use APM Flutter driver in Java as well. And Flutter uh, Finder library that we used, uh, this library is available as a as a, a, a package, a Maven based package. It is hosted with the, the author's own um, credentials, but you can safely use that. So you can use it. Cool. Uh, we've got one more question here. Um, just bring it back up again. Can we automate native apps as well with Appium Flutter Driver? Obviously, that's what we saw, right? Like we saw we automated na entire native screens 
native screens which were made in razor pay right so you can definitely automate uh, native apps in fact you can automate a native app in which you have flutter view that also you can automate you can add automate native app in which you have web view you can automate a native app which has both web view and flutter view so you can automate all of those things there are certain there are certain things which are not yet uh, not yet uh, implemented uh, in this apm flutter driver you can go through that uh, library and you can um, you can find the things um, I, at the end of this presentation i have shared the references as well so whenever you get the link for this presentation you, you will get the references for all the libraries um Akhmaram, thank you for your talk today it's been great Yes. Um, lots of interesting things there that you've been um, been working on.